Let's review what we covered in an earlier lesson on simple harmonic motion. A restoring force is a force that acts to bring things back to a state of equilibrium. In simple harmonic motion, the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. And the term amplitude refers to the maximum displacement from equilibrium. So here's a mass spring system. We have the spring, there's the mass, and the spring is connecting a wall and the mass. If the displacement is zero, then the force that's in the spring, which is the net force on the mass, is also zero, and the mass isn't accelerating. This is just, for example, if the mass is sitting there with the spring at its natural length. Now, if we pull the mass to the right a distance, delta x, let's call it positive, the spring is going to stretch. And the spring is going to pull back to the left. And the further we pull the mass to the right, the harder the spring wants to pull back to the left. And because that force is acting to the left, when we displaced the mass to the right, if we call the displacement to the right positive, then the force which acts to the left would be negative. When delta x is not equal to zero, then the net force on the mass is also not equal to zero. And the acceleration is also not equal to zero. So I think what we're seeing here is the bigger the displacement on the mass, the bigger the force from the spring will be exerted on that mass, and the larger the magnitude of the acceleration of that mass. When we let the mass go, that net force right there, that force to the left, is going to pull this mass back towards equilibrium. At one tiny, tiny increment of time, that mass will be back at its equilibrium position. At that instant, and only at that instant, the force in the spring will be zero, and the object will not be accelerating. The mass will not be accelerating. Well, of course, it's going to overshoot that equilibrium position, and it's going to end up over here. And it turns out that that displacement is numerically equal to this one that we started the whole thing with. That displacement, however, is to the left, which makes it a negative displacement. And the spring is now all squished and will push back the other way, which will be positive. So what we can see here is that the displacement and the force from the spring are always in opposite senses. Where one is positive, the other is negative. All of this shows why Hooke's law is often expressed in this way. The elastic force is equal to negative k times delta x, where k is called the spring constant or the force constant, and it is essentially the tightness of the spring. But that's why there's a negative sign here, because you can see that the displacement and the net force are always opposite in sign. Okay, so there's this mass, and I've left the spring off here because it would just cloud the diagram. We're going to pull the mass back, we're going to let it go, and it's going to go back to equilibrium, then it's going to overshoot, then it's going to go back to equilibrium and go over here on the right, back to equilibrium on the left, back and forth, back and forth. The maximum displacement is better known as the amplitude. We talked about that in an earlier lesson. I could call it capital A if I wanted. And numerically, that is also the amplitude. At that point, we also have maximum forces and maximum accelerations. We just covered that on the previous slide. Now what about the energy of a mass spring system? Let's talk about kinetic energy. At the extreme left and extreme right, 
that mass is not moving for an instant. And if a mass is not moving, it has no kinetic energy. So I've tried to draw this black dot. I've tried to line it up with whoosh, the center of that mass. And this black dot down here, I've tried to line up with the center of this mass. So at those two locations, the extreme left and extreme right, we have no kinetic energy. This mass, when it's on the left, let's say, will then start going back to the right. Slowly, faster, 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 and it reaches a maximum right there at the equilibrium position. And the kinetic energy curve, therefore, goes something like this. Now in math, you might recognize that as something like a parabola. And the reason for that is the kinetic energy is proportional to the speed squared, which is what you have when you have a parabola. You have a squared term. Now the elastic potential energy is the amount of energy stored in the spring. Is there any spot where there is no energy stored in the spring? In other words, where the spring is at its natural length. And that would be at the equilibrium position. Right there. The spring is not stretched, nor is it squished when the mass is right there. When the mass is on the extreme left or on the extreme right, there is some tension in the spring. When the mass is on the extreme left, the spring is squished. When the mass is on the extreme right, the spring is stretched. Those curves look like that. So what we can see here is that the energy sloshes between kinetic energy and potential energy as this mass is going back and forth, back and forth. But that the sum of these energies is going to be a constant. If this is a frictionless table, then the total energy remains constant. In other words, if you take each one of these energies at each point, let's take this point right here, you can see that there is this much kinetic energy, but there's also this much potential. Well, if you add this much kinetic plus this much potential, look at that. You get a constant amount of mechanical energy. In an oscillating mass spring system, there is a constant interchange between elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. Depending on the orientation of the spring, say if the spring is oriented vertically, changes in gravitational potential energy might also be involved. So here we just covered a horizontally oriented mass spring system, but the same ideas apply for a vertically oriented mass spring system.